If you're trying to become an instructional designer or evaluate a training program, it's a great idea to learn more about the Kirkpatrick model of evaluation. So the Kirkpatrick model of evaluation was developed all the way back in the 1950s by Donald Kirkpatrick himself. Um, since then, it has hands down become probably the most popular model for training evaluation. So again, whether you're just learning about the field or if you want to start implementing this model to evaluate your own programs, this is a very, very good place to start. So let's dive into it. The Kirkpatrick model is made up of these four levels of training evaluation. So as we move down this list, so you know it starts with level one, the reaction, then learning, then behavior, then results. As we work our way down, the levels become increasingly difficult to evaluate, but also increasingly valuable for us to conduct those evaluations. So we're just going to go through each of these levels in order to make sure you know what each of them consists of. So the first one is reaction. How are people reacting to the experience? So what we're really measuring at this point is the overall satisfaction and engagement. Um, so you might see questions, you know, how satisfied are you with this experience? Would you recommend this experience to a friend? Um, you know, were you engaged? And some of these things can also be measured by the, like the facilitator or an, an observer. Um, but most commonly, these, this is measured via a survey. So at the end of the course, you take a survey, ask you questions about how satisfied you are, how relevant what you, um, you, you feel what you learned is to your job. Um, and this can also be done in interviews and focus groups. But again, surveys are definitely the most common way to measure reaction data. So level two, this is where we're actually measuring the learning. So are these people learning new knowledge, new skills, or new attitudes? That's the big question for level two. And the most common ways to measure this are with quizzes or tests. So, you know, a pre-test, post-test, or like little knowledge checks throughout an experience. But also interviews, focus groups, discussions, observations, and, and the list goes on. You know, you can have people give presentations and you can evaluate um, how well they do there to determine whether or not they learn something. But you get the idea. This is where most learning professionals stop. So in the field, you know, instructional designers in this space of learning and development, most of the evaluation is let's give people a survey at the end of the experience to see if they liked it and let's give them a test to see if they scored at least 90% and learned something. So those are, the, you know, that is a way to address level one and level two, but where things start getting really valuable and interesting are at level three. So this is behavior. We want to know are people performing these critical tasks that we identified? Are they actually behaving differently on the job now that we taught them these new knowledge, skills, or attitudes? So are they using what they learned on the job? That's the big question for level three. And again, you can use surveys for this. Probably not the most effective method, but you can imagine you know, if you're surveying people's managers and asking them about how their employees are performing, you might be able to get some valuable data about how the employees are performing differently. Observation, though, uh, is a common way. You know, the managers would be observing the employees to see if they're using those new skills or that new knowledge. Um, work reviews, again, you want to see if these new skills were implemented. And you can look at KPIs to see things like, um, you know, if you're working at a call center and you want to teach people to use screen sharing on their calls, you would look at that screen sharing key performance indicator to see, you know, are people actually using this new skill. So again, this is, this is like the gray area for a lot of instructional designers. It's, it's not very common to actually get into this and see are people performing differently, but this is very important and valuable to know. Because once you know whether or not people are performing differently, then you can move into level four, which is where you see are we producing, are we seeing the desired results from this intervention that we designed and developed? So are we actually seeing results for the business? So this is where we're looking at actual business and sales metrics. So we're not just looking at, oh, are people screen sharing, but are people providing um, a better customer experience 
you know, are we seeing higher customer satisfaction ratings? And is that leading to more sales or a better customer retention rate? So again, this is obviously like gold status, what you want to be uh, measuring when you're, when you're using so much time and resources and effort to designing these, these big training programs, you want to determine whether or not they're actually producing a return for the business and um, helping the business succeed overall, not just are people learning something and do they like what they learned? Because you know, that's one thing, but connecting that to the business is a completely different piece. So obviously you can't just design a training program, put it out there and then start thinking, okay, now how am I going to evaluate this thing? I mean, you can probably try piecing that together, but it won't be extremely effective. Uh, so most of the hard work for evaluation comes up front in the planning phase. So let's look at how you might plan to use, you know, how you might plan to evaluate your learning experience. So the first question you have to ask yourself is which results are we trying to achieve here? What are we trying to do for the business? Are we trying to reduce that? Um, are we trying to increase that customer retention rate? Are we trying to reduce the number of, you know, are we trying to in reduce the number of employees who quit? Um, so increase employee retention. Are we just trying to increase sales? You get the idea. And you see this first bullet, the very first question we want to ask ourselves, which results do we want to achieve for the business? That lines up with level four evaluation. Okay, so take note of that. Next, we need to ask, what do people need to do differently to achieve those results? So keyword, what do people need to do differently? What behaviors do we want to see? And you'll see this second question lines up with level three behavior evaluation. So we're working our way backwards through these levels to plan our um, learning program or our intervention. So now we might ask, okay, what knowledge and skills do these people need to do these things differently? So again, we're moving into level two. And then finally, how do we design an, an attractive intervention so that people will want to engage with it and, and acquire those knowledge and skills that they need? So uh, just to jump ahead here, you see we are we're basically you want to start with level four when you're planning an experience like this. If we don't start, oh, how am I going to design something that people like? Oh, how will I, I help them learn something? That's a counterproductive way to go about this. When we're actually trying to produce results for an organization, we need to start with those results in mind and orient all of the rest of our efforts to producing those results. So this is, this is a more useful way to think about the Kirkpatrick model just from a planning perspective. Um, again, level, level three and level four, not many people venture into that area, but that is where you will see, um, you know, that's where you'll get the most value out of your evaluation efforts because it will actually help you determine whether or not your training program or intervention was worthwhile in the first place. So again, it is always an iterative process. So um, if you, like evaluation doesn't have to come at the end of your experience. If you're finding as you go that what your efforts aren't leading to these changed behaviors or these results, you can always adjust at any point, uh, recalibrate and um, you know use this data to, to keep you on the right track. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Um, this book right here, Kirkpatrick's Four Levels of Training Evaluation by James and Wendy Kirkpatrick is a great read if you want to dive deeper into training evaluation and how Kirkpatrick's model is implemented at organizations today. Definitely check out this book. I'll link that in the des description. Um, and also, if you are here because you're trying to become an instructional designer and you want to use this info to ace your interview, check out my full video on becoming an instructional designer, which I will also link in the description. So thank you again. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video and I will see you in the next one.